Hi everyone, today is all about acting. My guest today is an international film and TV actor who's acted in some really seminal films such as La Femme Nakita, The Big Blue, and currently he has a new film screening in France uh, with the film entitled Envol. Uh, welcome Mark Dure. Hello Mark, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Very nice to be here, thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you. So did I pronounce that correctly, Envol? Envol, yes. Envol, envol, pardon envol, me. Yeah, my, yeah. I can speak a little bit of French, but my accent isn't perfect. <laughs> well, that's okay, yeah, understandable anyway. Uh, so listen, yeah. I'm, I'm really grateful to you for joining me. I know you've been really busy promoting uh, Envol. Can you just share a little bit about this film and um, you know where it's screening and what we can expect? Well, it's, uh, it's been launched uh, nationally in France, but it's an independent film. So we're just kind of struggling to uh, make it happen, make it, you know, seen. Uh, it's, uh, it's a story of two brothers uh, running a funeral parlor, funeral home, and uh, they're trying to uh, make ends meet and it doesn't really work that well. So uh, a belief is in, in there, you know, trying to... Uh, rip them off really but he's a good man at the end of the film you find out that he's a good guy and there's this kind of a kind of a dead corpse who's not really dead well i mean let's put it this way he's got some kind of a, a secret in the coffin and this secret is gonna lead to a, a happy ending and we'll be all uh, very happy and uh well, it sounds uh, intriguing. Know. Sounds a bit like a comedy as well. Am it's, I right? a, it's a comedy. It's an Italian comedy. We play like Italian, you know, uh, brothers because I was born from a, uh, of, a of an Italian mother. So uh, yeah. I do speak the language. So we have like kind of a, we shift from time to time between languages. And it's a fun film. It's, uh, it's well, well filmed and it's been really well received and, you know, well, I'm excited to see it. I will see it. Now, um, obviously, it's screening in France, so it's not available for our UK or international uh, audience at the moment. But not is there yet. any opportunity for them to watch it maybe later on? Yes, because it's been subtitled in, uh, in English, so I guess it's, it will cross the channel one day. Uh, they're working on it, actually, and um, uh, we're doing festival, film festivals. Uh, we, we're going to Sicily next uh, month, and then hopefully we'll be able to come uh, uh, to England, which I love Brilliant. to. Well, when you do, give me a heads up and I'll be happy to post it across my socials. Will. So, you know, everybody's aware of that. Brilliant. So listen, let's, um, let's talk about you and your journey. Um, so how did you get into acting? And by the way, um, I will like to talk a bit more about your heritage, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, I forgot to introduce you as Mark. F. Dure, and the F stands for Francesco, which is Italian heritage. So we'll delve a bit that into into that in a moment. Thank but you. start start with a start with where you started and how you got into acting. Well, I was uh, I had a little strut, you know, I couldn't really speak well when I was a, a teenager, and my mom just uh, said to me, "You should go and take some acting classes." So I I tried. I didn't really like it at the beginning, and I, but I from, you know, I just got used to it. And then um, hopefully I presented the National Conservatory in Paris, which is, um, you know, the equivalent of Royal Academy in London. I uh, got in, in this for three years and then started to work and, uh, you know, got bitten by the, bit by the, the, the track. And, yeah, loved it. And then started to, to, to do theater, actually. I mean, I started with the, uh, on stage, then um, then I went to the uh, Rose Bruford College, mm -hmm. which is um, in Kent, if I'm not mistaken, south of London. Yeah, like an hour from London and a half an hour. Good, very good school, excellent school. I did some uh, some good stuff there, and then from there I, I traveled again. Went to uh, the Stella Adler Conservatory in New York, where I stayed for about twelve years, really. <laughs> and how old were you throughout this? You know, what kind of age range was I was it? 20 uh, at the time. I was uh, 20 years of age when I, I started uh, uh, the Conservatoire. And then um, uh, then I, uh, I was 22, 23 in London, 25, 6, 7 in New York. Then I went to Rome and uh, that bodega. And then I, uh, I started to work in Italy as well. Wow. You, well, the thing is, let's just talk about it then, because 
you are of uh, French and Italian heritage, so you're fluent in both languages, which I think is so like such a unique skill to have for anybody and for acting it's perfect because then you can do international films right right you can yeah i can act in different i mean two languages three languages really because i do things in uh, i mean characters in italian french english and the funny thing is that you uh you kind of a uh, the language brings you somewhere else uh, in terms of personality, in terms of a characterization. And that's the good thing. It's really funny. You find, you know, different uh, um, little secrets within your own system, which uh, that, you know, drives you some, some paths where you kind of uh, uh, experiment things and uh, learn to, to know yourself a little more. And but I mean, the rhythm is good. That's what I like, the rhythm of languages. Oh, definitely. I love languages. You know, I'm constantly learning a new language. So I, I can just see how what you're sharing, you do become a different person almost when you speak a different language. You know, there's a different part of yourself that comes to the fore. So for those who want to follow in your footsteps and become actors too, if they can speak other languages, do you think they'd really need to showcase that? Yeah, I think it's a good thing. I mean, it's, uh, I think that if you speak, I mean, it, speaking languages gives you strength to another. In other words, if you speak French and you do speak like uh, English or Italian, it kind of strengthen the, uh, your mother tongue and your mother tongue strengthen your second, uh, second language. Uh, it's, it's a kind of a, a, a game, really very funny game and uh, you you can really work and discover different uh, techniques and people and acting uh, acting ways you know where you adapt and uh, it, it's very um, it, it's 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 very very uh, uh, enrichissant. Uh, en uh, enriches you enriches you enriches you yeah yeah, and, and, yeah. And sounds amazing so you, you took the steps, you know, you went down the, the route of uh, going to all these film schools, acting schools, should I say. Now, not everybody may have that opportunity. So it's not necessarily the way, the only path into acting. There's many pathways into acting, correct? Yes, correct. I mean, especially nowadays. I mean, you know, especially uh, with uh, all those iPhones and all those, uh, those cameras you have, uh, we didn't have at the time. You do have it, have, have it today, so you can, you know, film yourself, uh, memorize a text, you know, and uh, have a kind of a show reel, as they call it, a demo reel, mm -hmm. and uh, try to uh, to send it to talent agents or, um, you know, or people who are susceptible to uh, maybe hire you for for different uh, jobs. Um, so that's the good thing. I think it's uh, nowadays. I mean, you have to have uh, visibility. You have to be. Uh, you know, among the, um, the visual, people want to see you anymore. At the time, in my time, you used to have auditions. You, you used to to go uh, out of your house and go and you you know do an audition, come back home. Nowadays, you do self tapes, so you home you you know you shoot yourself, uh, and then you sent sent out the uh, the material. And then you wait and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. And I think that kind of got heightened during uh, the lockdowns, international lockdowns, where people were still trying to find work. And this was the most sensible way to do it and stick to the rules, you know, the legislation that was changed to accommodate um, the pandemic. So look. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah um, so it's really interesting, you know, going back to your journey, you then starred, you know, acted in some really amazing films. Uh, really well-known French films like La Haine, uh, La Femme Nakita, The Big Blue, that was like international hit. Now, how did you make that transition from this young man who's traveling around the world trying to get all this experience and build his acting uh, forte to being on the big screen? Well, it just happens. Uh, I guess it's, um, you have to, you know, we are, many we have like uh, you have to keep the little child within that we have we all have one uh, you know you can speak to him sometimes he speaks back to you um, from time to time and then you you go and you know you 
hit the road and you take you go your own sweet way and try to do the best you can with those characters actually those characters mold you it's more of um uh, having an experience with friendship you know and you make some friends but i mean it's you uh it's you with you with yourself and this character and from time to time you know it's um it's uh, it's an interesting way of uh knowing yourself and at the same time um at the same time trying to be uh, uh trying to share and be um uh be well, another yeah. person be you essentially being a, a completely different person because you're adopting a new character yeah the character is, is there i mean it goes you know come it comes in comes out sometimes you just let it go you have to be a, a, a kind of a really free with this you know you you don't want to push it you don't want to stress it uh but the character is 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 there it, it's um, it's a kind of it, it's like riding a tiger really from time to time you know <laughs> some characters are crazy uh you know i play dracula and you go nuts because suddenly you you, you look at the at the necks of people you know in in the subway and you look at those necks and you're like oh that's a one nice one i could bite on this uh and then you know you're flirting with schizophrenia really but it's not schizophrenia it's just acting it's a game really yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, over the years, um, how many, I think one of the things I like to highlight, not to be negative, but to be really realistic, is that any job in the media, whether it's on screen or off screen, and in this, obviously, we're talking about on screen acting today, there's a lot of rejection that comes in this industry. Can you just highlight yeah. some of your rejection and how you handled that? Well, it's uh, sometimes it's tough. Yeah, you have to be uh, extremely. Uh, you have to be strong. You have to believe in yourself, uh, as Simone de Beauvoir used to say. Uh, I accept the great adventure of being me. Uh, I love that. Actually, I might steal that and use it. Yeah, it's a it's a good line because it it it's an adventure, and uh, you have to be uh, psychologically, you know. Uh, strong, yeah, and because we are, I mean, the, the tool, we are our own tool, you know, it's just our skin, you know, our, our, our muscles, our, our blood is right there, so you have to deal with that, so rejection is there, um, but as I said, you know, you have to speak to your, to your friend within, you know, your little child, your, whoever is there, and try to, um, to share with him what you what you have on on, on your heart. Sometimes it, it's very helpful. It it sounds crazy, but it works really well. Uh, we have to. Uh, I mean, actors have to be aware that we are not just one person. We are. We have many many characters uh, within, and um, we have to use them. But from sometimes rejection is a good thing too because you learn about things. I mean, you, you know, you go, you say to yourself, "Well, I wasn't really." that good today or I was not, you know, kind of um, detendu, relaxed, you know, uh, re relax relaxation is, is, is very important in this business. I mean, you have to be really, uh, and you have to be you, you know, you have to be, uh, uh, let you be the, the you that, uh, uh, who loves you. Yeah, authentic, just being authentic. authentic being, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good term. Now, yeah. some of those films I mentioned earlier, I really urge everybody to go and check them out if you if you haven't uh, watched them. And I will list them um, in the show notes so you know you can check them out. But Mark, you, at that time, you kind of got propelled into the public space. Um, to use a phrase that I don't particularly like, you, you know, you, you suddenly were encounter, encountering fame. What is that like? What does that feel like? And what's the reality behind that? Well, yeah, fame. Yeah, fame is interesting because, um, how can I put this? Uh, to me, fame is, is, first of all, it's work. You know, fame comes uh, before uh, work, especially as a friend of mine used to say, you know, in the dictionary. How do you mean? Yesterday. Sorry, I don't understand that. Well, you have to to work first. I mean, to me, fame comes because of your working uh, uh, process, because you've done something which uh, people can rely to. And then suddenly, you know, they look at you and they say, okay, you're the guy who shot uh, Vince in La Haine, or you are, 
you know. And that's Vincent Cassel. Uh, that's Vincent yeah. Cassel, yeah. yeah. And they hate you, and at the same time, they love you. And that's fame as well. Fame is for them. Uh, it's for the public. I don't think it's uh, it's something that you have to, to... I mean, we are aware of it, I guess, but we're not uh, really... Um, counting on fame. To me, fame uh, is a kind of a work comes, you know, work gives fame. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough, tough uh, question because uh, everybody wants to be famous. We, we know that, but sometimes you don't want to. Uh, you see, to me, fame is a, is a kind of a, can be a it's, a, it's a, it's a good weapon, but can be also a, a terrible one because you, um, you can just let go of things going like, okay, now I'm famous, you know, I'm known, or they, they've seen this, I'm good, I, I feel better. Uh, it's, it's true, but at the same time, you have to keep going and working. Yes, um, we, we have two expressions in English, and I'm sure you're familiar with them, Mark. Um, so the first, as you uh, alluded to, it's like a sword, but we call it a double-edged sword. Double-edged so, sword, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing is you're only as good as your last job. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is that sometimes um, fame disappear. Yeah. It disappears, and then you just on your own. Uh, with all those people within, you know, I like this idea of that we're not just one person, but uh, many. But many. then you have to stay realistic around that because suddenly if you find yourself propelled into that kind of public space, you've got to maintain some semblance of normality. Otherwise, it's going to be crazy. Yes, you do. It's true. It's very true. You have to stay to say to stay yourselves yourself. Sorry, and and also you just you know play with it. It's like uh, you know a nice um, uh, chocolate chocolate chip cookie. I mean, you you just yeah. bite in it from time to time. But uh, I like that. It's, it's, a, it's, it's yeah. a good it's a good um, suggestion. So yeah. look, um, we're going to have uh, a lot of people joining us today who are interested in acting. So. Can you sort of give some tips or some advice on how do you network to make sure you open up opportunities for yourself and get those auditions or those paid jobs? Obviously, there's a lot of stuff you can do and join groups and things. But beyond that, what else can be done? Well, it's number one. I think that you have to uh, to kind of... Um, um, Find some friends of yours who are, do have the same envy about acting and try to do something together. Uh, it can be theater. It can be a little a workshop play. You know, you put some, some money, you know, you try to show your work. It can also be uh, um, an iPhone, you know, an iPhone uh, video mm -hmm. that you can just do on yourself or with friends as well, other actors, actresses, and try to, uh, to show your work. The good thing is that sometimes you come across some um, some scenarists, young ones, you know, who are trying to write something for, for themselves and all that. I started like that. I mean, I, I did a, a short a short film at the time. We had like uh, an idea, and we started to to work on this, and then we uh, we sent sent it to festival film festival, and then we got some kind of visibility on it. And from you know, it, it's just. Um, I think that nowadays it's easier than at the time. At the time, it was really tough because you had to go through the, those acting schools and, and be, you know, recognized as a good actor, I mean, as a good student and all that. Nowadays, you can stay home, self-tape yourself. And uh, create your own, create your own Create your own and send it out, you know, and you have to have like, and find out about networks because you do have like some different networks. It's easy to have a, um, the mail of an agent or a talent agency and just send it and see what happens because sometimes they're very interesting interested in, in newcomers yeah uh, that's their business as well I mean they want some fresh blood as they call it yeah. uh, so that's what I would uh, recommend yeah no no it sounds great and um what the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is uh, adopting the character so for example you played Cyrano de Bejerac and um, like, what? Where's your mind at? How do you take on that character? Because you played so many. You played Napoleon and various other uh, characters. Mm. How do you get yourself into that headspace of essentially, if you're playing a real life historic character, somebody who was really existed, 
or it could be a fictional character that somebody's written a screenplay. Yes, well, it's, yeah. Uh, well, actually, in, in Borgia and Outlander, those characters were, had, uh, were the real, I mean, were real characters. Mm. They had existed at the time. Um, well, it, it, to me, it's the, uh, number one, it's the, uh, the lines. I mean, the way it's written uh, gives you an idea of the rhythm of the way this, uh, this character behaves and speak. And also the, um, uh, the costume. I mean, to me, the wardrobe costume is very important. It's 50% of a character. You just, uh, you know, uh, slip yourself in this, uh, in this uh, disguise, really, and then you become somewhere this character, you know, if, especially if you have a wig or, you know, or, 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 you know, like in Dracula, I mean, you have those long hair and you have this kind of a special mouth. Gives you a hint, gives you a kind of a, uh, a taste of the character uh, and then then it's uh, it's the preparation you know working on uh, where it comes you know where this character comes from and the way you see it and so uh, doing a bit of research so you do some research then. yeah I do a lot of research I mean I, I have to have like a few angles on a character and see what I can you know I can play with I like that because I think that when you're on stage or on, on a set, a movie set, you have to be free. You just have to go like, okay, you have to be, you have to know your piece, but at the same time, be open for a director uh, to direct you. And if, you know, sometimes they want something totally different, then you adapt and, uh, and, and you go this way. You know, I remember in Borgia, I had uh, uh, worked on a, AVC, what you call it, you know, those guys who have like a heart attack. They have a heart attack, so they had kind of a paralyzed on the, on the side, you know, I was paralyzed. Oh, yeah. oh like um, somebody's had a stroke. Stroke, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So I decided that my stroke was on my right face. I mean, I would, you know, work on it here. And then when I got on, 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 the, on, on the set, I mean, it was, they wanted the other way around. I mean, they wanted the left one to be, uh, to be uh, altered by your stroke. So you had to adapt right away. So it's, it's a funny thing as well, because you go, oh, damn, I prepared on the right side. You know, I prepared everything from that side. Now they want the other side because camera is here. So um, that's, well, that's what I mean. I mean, you have to prepare. If you prepare and do a, a research, it helps a lot. Really. Yeah, so it, it occurs for me from what you're saying, like doing your research, getting into like, the, like checking out the costume and, you know, how you're going to look, but also remaining flexible in that. Because like you said, the director may have a completely different vision of how they want things done or the way they're shooting it, different angles like you just mm -hmm. described. That was a really good example, by the way, you know, of how you have to adapt straight away. Yeah, and it, and also this the sense of humor of a character. I think it's very important too. You know, find the uh, this the funny the funny way the funny side of it. Uh, even if you create it, doesn't matter. You just put put him in a in a kind of a funny situation and see what happens. It's it's really interesting too. You know, uh, 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 because everything is funny in this business. I was recently I was you know we were doing this uh, envol takeoff. Actually, that's the. The, the title in English, uh, the English title, and I was uh, I was wondering. I mean, I was working on a on death. Really, I was I wanted to know the kind of I wanted to have an info on on, on uh, how you die. Really, how you how you create a, uh, how you put yourself in 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 death. I mean, how you die. Really, artistically speaking. And then I called a friend of mine who was on set and he, he said to me, I said, you know, could you help me on this? And he said, I'm sorry, Mark, I'm, 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 I'm rehearsing right now. Uh, uh, okay, uh, let me die and I call you back. Uh -huh. So that's the idea. It's uh, that everything is, is, has a kind of a twist of humor. And I think we have to keep that yeah. in a character, wherever you put it. Humor is very important. The humor of the character carries his humor, yes. Okay, brilliant. Well, listen, it's been an absolute joy and really interesting to get just a snippet, an insight into <laughs> your career. And I wish I had a lot more time. I would just love to be able to talk to you all day. Um, before we wrap up, do you have any other advice to impart uh, before, before we finish up? Well, uh, keep the faith, however small, as uh, Brian Cox used to say. Uh, keep the faith and believe in yourself. Oh, definitely. Uh, 
Brilliant. Yeah. I'm even going to take that on. Keeping the faith and believing in myself. Really great advice. Mark yeah. Francesco Dure, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, mille. <laughs> thank you so much. And uh, thanks for sharing all you know, your story and uh, advice. Um, and yeah, when you are working on something new, I will share details of all the films Mark's been in. Not all of them, there's too many, but the main ones and uh, Embol, I'll put the details of that uh, in the show notes as well. It's been a pleasure, Mark. Thank you so much. Pleasure as well. Thank you. Well, there you go. If you are inspired by Mark, then please feel free to give this video a thumbs up and please do share it with anybody you know who is interested in getting into acting. As always, I always invite you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on anything. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm doing a whole series about on-screen job roles. That's from acting to presenting, journalism and so on. So please do continue uh, to feel free to subscribe and I really appreciate the support. I've got another great guest next time. So I look forward to your company then. Thank you.